Hello and welcome to this video where I'm going to be going over chat GPT for marketing research. Two things before I begin. I have this little note up here at the top. I'm going to keep it here. It says we're experiencing exceptionally high demand. Please hang tight as we work on scaling our systems. No, a lot of people are having like trouble getting to the page or logging in. That's because of it. So if it's still happening, give it some time. Eventually will be able to get in. Last but not least, I am on the tail end of being six. So my voice is a little not as enthusiastic as it normally is. That'll get better. Let's begin. So here we have with market research and I have templates as always. So I have, what do people truly want when looking to X? X is what you can fill in. What are some of the most common struggles when it comes to X? Why do few people succeed at X? And what do people secretly fear when looking to X? So for the first one, what do people truly want when looking to build an online business is going to be what I'm filling in for this example. Let's click on this and see what we get. All right, so it's a small little blur, but that's fine in case you're not really familiar with your audience. So just kind of quickly scanning over. They want to earn a steady income. They want to have flexibility. They want to scale something, financial freedom, uh, make a positive impact to achieve personal satisfaction and a sense of purpose. What you can do is actually expand upon more of these because obviously earn a steady income. That's pretty simple. A lot of people can understand that. But we could kind of just peel the onion a little bit more, as they say. So let's take a look at one of these. So why is making a positive impact on the world like such a big deal? So let's ask ChatGPT. And so I just put, why do so many people want to make an impact on the world? Or why does it mean so much maybe to them? You know, you can word that however you want. Like I always talked about, usually the better input is the better output. But so if you don't get what you want, you can always just change it up a little. Let's just put that in there. Okay, so it talks about how it can mean different things for different people. For this, what I, I'm going to keep that there. You can read it if you want. I'm not going to go all the way through. But I think here what I'd recommend is like talking more about an online business. So if I do something like this, um, give me one second. I'm just going to rewrite this. So but how can someone make an impact to the world with an online business? This will give us some more examples. And like I said, just some more information and details about our market. Let's hit enter. Okay, so it gives us a few examples I'll quickly go over. So providing a product or service, supporting a cause, creating jobs, incorporating sustainable practices, providing access to information, creating innovative solutions, offering a platform for other small businesses and entrepreneurs to promote their products and services. Those are just examples, but this is a good example of one uh, like template for research. And then, of course, what you can do to kind of get even more information. As we talked about here, these are pretty bland, but you know, why not ask it a few more questions to really get more market research? Let's move to the next one. What are this, some of the most common struggles when it comes to building an online business? Enter. And so it says there was an error getting a response. Like I said, this might be due to all the volume. I'm not sure if it was my internet. My internet turned off randomly before. Uh, but let's just, I'm going to open it up in a new chat and hit it again for enter. All right, so here we go. Some common struggles when building an online business, uh, generating traffic, creating and maintaining a website, develop and implementing effective marketing strategies, uh, finding and retaining employees, managing finances, keeping up with the latest technology, uh, staying up to date with legal and compliance requirements, balancing competing demand on time and resources, standing out from competitors in a crowded marketplace, building and maintaining relationships and scaling the business to meet growing demand. So once again, if we wanted to, what we can also do would be like, why is creating and maintaining a website so difficult for most people? Like you can really dive deeper into the reasoning behind it and get some of the more, I guess you could say more information in terms of why people have trouble. They might be a technophobe. They might've done it before and they're like, this is too confusing. They might've hired someone and like they gave them the worst website ever. Whatever the reasons may be, it's just another way of diving deeper into the information that you get. So we have this one here, I believe is next, uh, building an online business, buzziness. There we go and enter. All right, so we got a good amount here. Uh, let's just quickly look through these. Lack of a clear and feasible business plan, lack of niche or unique selling proposition, inadequate marketing, lack of understanding the target marketing, uh, target market, excuse me, lack of skills, lack of persistence. That's a good one. Lack of confidence and persistence. I can't tell you how many people lack that. It's like no matter what you have, everything else here, if you're not persistent, you lack confidence, everything you do is going to show up that way. And it's, it's never a good thing. Uh, not diversifying the income stream. That's not a bad one. I mean, a lot of people usually have trouble building up one stream in the beginning, but as you get going on, that can definitely be one. But these are just some examples. And I think we had one more. I'm going to quickly go through this. What do people secretly fear when looking to build an online business? Question mark. So I'm going to read through a little and talk as it's uh, 
going up here. So this is one of those things, what keeps people up at night staring at the ceiling in their bed? That's always a way of kind of phrasing it. I remember hearing once and it stuck with me, uh, fear of failure. And we have a network error. So uh, hey, like I said, I'm glad I got to talk through. So this has been going on a little, or at least in this video, but uh, I'll go through one more time. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I believe this is just from so many people using it at the time. So one second. Okay, so it looked like we had a little bit more on the previous one, but just kind of they gave you some a few tips here. Fear of failure, fear of not knowing enough technical or business knowledge, fear of not being able to generate enough revenue, not being able to attract and retain customers, fear of not being able to stand out in a crowded market, and so on and so forth. Once again, this is a good example where you can take one of these and really dive deeper into it. You know, why do people have such a fear of being judged or, you know, not having technical information when, say, there's YouTube tutorials or there's step by step guides or there's courses or there's coaching or there's groups, whatever? it's going to be. So you can really dive deeper in each one of those to see what really uh, people think about it in terms of these fears and kind of expand upon that if you're going for market research or copywriting and so on and so forth. But that is going to conclude this video when it comes to chat GPT for market research. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. Hope you got some value out of this. My name is James and I'll see you in the next one.